Hello, hamsters and Hanzo mains. My name is Tibius Gain, and uh, SGDQ is over. Denmark is out of the World Cup, and so I have run out of reasons or excuses not to get back to making videos. Fortunately, I don't have to worry about finding an interesting subject to talk about, because Overwatch recently revealed their newest hero, Hammond, aka The Wrecking Ball, who is a, a hamster in a giant mecha hamster ball with guns on it. Which, there's, there's really no way to describe Hammond, where he doesn't sound like a joke, like a parody of, of, of himself, essentially. And that's because he is. He is very much a joke character. And that presents us with some interesting stuff to talk about in terms of how Overwatch um, works as a piece of character design and as a piece of media. Now, when it comes to sci-fi, you always have to commit to a certain level of suspension of disbelief. In Star Wars, you kind of have to believe that it is possible to travel faster than light without, you know, breaking every single law of physics that has ever existed. You have to believe that you can have a laser sword that somehow has physical presence enough that you can clash it against other laser swords and not go through, but at the same time is powerful enough to cut through almost anything. And with Star Trek, you have to believe that you can just have a materializer that can make tea, all gray, hot, at, on command, and that you also can travel faster than light in that particular version of reality, and that there are aliens out there called Klingons, who for some reason use exactly the same mathematical counting system as English-speaking humans down on Earth, like, there's always a level of suspension of disbelief that has to happen in order for a sci-fi story of any kind to work. For Overwatch, they have always kind of tried to stay not within, like, a realistic hard sci-fi space, because Overwatch is very much not hard sci-fi. I, I, if anything, it's, it's, it's sci-fi fantasy, and I just prefer to call it straight-up fantasy, because it, to me, Overwatch has always had a lot more in common with fantasy stories than it has with sci-fi. But Overwatch, generally speaking, has tended to stray close to a kind of quasi-plausible version of the future. Like, we have, you know, the sentient robots who end up going to war with humanity. That's, like, one of the oldest sci-fi tropes in the entire universe. We have, you know, high-tech snipers. We have hackers. We have, like, all the, all the usual stuff. And then, for some reason, a cyborg ninja. But all of that is sort of stuff that's like, okay, but if you had super high-tech robot technology, you could probably make all those things happen. And then we have the hyper-intelligent animals. Now, the first one of those that was real was obviously Winston, who... It's like, yeah, you have to suspend some disbelief in order to believe that a gorilla could be a super scientist, but a gorilla is nonetheless a lot closer to a human than to pretty much any other animal on Earth, like barring like a chimpanzee or something. Like, it's plausible that with an amount of super science that we don't know about yet and like a genetic breeding program on the moon or whatever, maybe you could create a, a gorilla 20 years from now or 100 years from now that can understand human speech, right? Like, it's not outside of the scope of possibility that it would be possible with like gene therapy and, and, and you know, certain kinds of, of breeding technique to create a species of gorilla that has an, a, a level of intelligence much closer closer to human. Therefore, when it comes to creating fantasy super science, it's not super implausible that you would have a gorilla that could learn to be even smarter than a normal human and actually be a super scientist itself. Like, that's that's sort of within the scope of what I'm willing to accept in terms of suspension of disbelief. And then there's Hammond, who is a hamster. A hamster who builds escape capsules to fly through space with and then crash lands in Australia and builds a combat-ready battle mech to participate in Bloodsport. And does all of this without anyone ever finding out that he's a hamster. That's okay. So now the suspension of disbelief has been taken from someday in the future, super science will make gorillas somewhat more intelligent than gorillas are supposed to be, to sometime in the future, super science will make a fucking hamster, a tiny ass rodent grow an intelligence that is beyond what most humans could muster like even in the real world like it's wow you have to suspend some disbelief to get there but that's kind of where the overwatch aesthetic chimes in to help because overwatch has always been a saturday morning cartoon show like from an aesthetic perspective that's where overwatch is we are living in Overwatch in a post-apocalyptic world, like in the aftermath of world-spanning global conflict with an evil AI that's trying to destroy all human life on Earth. Most other sci-fi 
that has that premise will go decidedly more post-apocalyptic in aesthetic, but Overwatch has never really been that. Even in Australia, in Junkertown, even in that blasted hellscape of a, of a future society with Junkrat and Roadhog hang out, it's not like it's like the Radiation Pockets and Fallout 3 up in here. It's all kind of pleasant and clean, all things considered. And that aesthetic is kind of what allows Overwatch to make this curious leap to Hammond himself, to have him be not a complete, implausible, ridiculous, idiotic joke within the game, but to, to actually kind of fit in. And here's the thing, if Overwatch had gone with an art style that was any more realistic than it, like just even a little bit realistic, that has even like a, a little bit of Call of Duty in it, or a little bit of, of, of like that sort of dark and gritty, realistic military shooter aesthetic going on in it, Hammond wouldn't work. Like, it's no, you could not do that. It would look completely, stupidly ridiculous. But because we already have characters like Winston, who's like a gorilla, but only just barely a gorilla, really, when you look at him, you can kind of get away with using a character like Hammond. So, how do you character design a hyper-intelligent future space hamster? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. First of all, they really haven't, like, Overwatch have committed to their joke. Hammond is a hamster. He's not some sort of hyper-intelligent, you know, speaking hamster walking on two legs in a suit, um, kind of behaving like a human, acting like a human, talking like a human. In fact, he can't even speak English, and so far as we know from, from his in-game voice lines. He has a robot that can translate his, his uh, things into English for him, and presumably he understands human speech, but he doesn't produce human speech. So we're not quite over in that complete, oh, it's just like a, a human in a hamster suit. No, no, he's a hamster. He behaves like a hamster. He looks like a hamster, but he has the intelligence of someone who is more than capable and also willing to build a death robot that will kill you. So what's going on with this character design? Well, there's a couple of little things that they've done. They really haven't done much. Like, mostly Hammond is just a cartoony hamster who lives in the Overwatch universe. There really isn't a lot of sort of outsized, you know, expressive uh, changes that are made to him. There's two things that I would primarily draw attention to. First of all, the plate on the front of his head. This is kind of like, um, you know, the bolt in the neck that's kind of iconic for Frankenstein's monster, like almost as though his, his, his head is bolted to, to his shoulders, that kind of thing, right? That is a visual shorthand that shows that Frankenstein's monster was not put together by nature. It shows that he was put together by a human working with human tools, and it, it highlights from a character design perspective, it makes him look more artificial. The same thing is kind of going on with the little head plate that Hammond's got going on here. It's an indication that Something artificial has been done to this guy. Like some some human, presumably, has put a metal plate in or on his head in order to do some kind of experimentation. And its location right on his forehead, right over his brain, tells us something about which part of Hammond has been artificially tampered with. His brain, his mind. So the character design is telling us that in terms of the character, there's something going on with his, his brain, with his head. Something has been done to him. And that's kind of... That's kind of the character design indication that you're dealing here with a hyper-intelligent super hamster. But outside of that, there's really very little. I think the primary thing I'd draw attention to, and something that indeed his introductory video draws attention to, are his eyebrows. Now, eyebrows are something that hamsters can have eyebrows in real life. I've seen some specimens of hamsters, particular breeds, that grow really long, sort of flowing uh, eyebrow hair for whatever reason, because humans are weird and we breed them to do that, and it's kind of cruel, uh, but nonetheless, hamsters in real life just, like, generally not, don't have a lot of eyebrow action going on, but Hammond does, and part of what that helps with is it helps with his expressiveness, it helps with his, um, oh no, actually, it's not hamsters that have eyebrows, it's guinea pigs that have eyebrows, I think, that can be bred to have eyebrows, I might be wrong about that, but regardless, rodents like hamsters in real life don't really have eyebrows at all. They don't really have that. So what's the what's the purpose of including it so I, so prominently in a character design like Hammond? Well, I think there's a couple of things going on. First of all, emoting. Emoting is really uh, not just like emotes that you spam in game whenever you get a kill on some you know, Widowmaker who's out of place where she shouldn't be. I mean, emoting in terms of conveying emotion through body language and through facial expression. When you don't have eyebrows, 
conveying facial expressions with your eyes can be really difficult. Humans, um, when we look at a character, we the first thing we scan for is a face. That's the first thing a human does when it looks at an image, is it scans for faces. That's just something the brain does in the background, and if it finds a face, the eyes will go there first. And the first part of the face that the eyes go to are the eyes. Like, that's the first place that we look, because that's where so much of human expression lives in the eyes like little we can do all kinds of things by just kind of twitching our eyes or moving them into a certain position in our eyeball we can do a hell of a lot to indicate our mood but Hammond can't because Hammond has hamster eyes and hamster eyes they do have pupils like they do have pupils and irises it's not like they don't have those things but generally speaking there's like you can't really what direction is he looking in at any given point in time can be kind of hard to tell. It's not really as clear as it is with a human eye where you have, you know, the whites of the eyeball and then the iris and then the thing. And so when he does an eye roll, how do you show that when all you have is this big black void to use? When he, you know, does a little look away quickly because he's, uh, you know, awkward about something, how do you indicate that? That gets harder. So one of the things you can do to ameliorate that, to help you give yourself more opportunities to emote his his expression with his face, well, give him a big pair of eyebrows, because eyebrows can do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to conveying a particular expression. So I think that's kind of why they're there. But I also think there's something else going on. It's also having eyebrows like that makes him more human. Like it makes him just feel a little bit more like he has human expressions, like he has human emotions. You can see it here in particular. These eyebrows pointing down, like giving him that kind of determined kind of, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm going to build myself an escape capsule. I'm going to get out of here. I don't know what his voice would sound like. He's a hamster, probably more high-pitched. Um, and it kind of helps him, it get, gives him a little bit more intelligence. It also makes him look mischievous. Like it makes him look a little bit like a troublemaker, like a troll. Like he's, uh, he's, he's someone who would do something just for fun to mess with someone because he's got that kind of expression thing going on. So I think that's those are the primary functions. It's like It tells us something about his personality as a character, that he has these, you know, permanently downward-poking, big, bushy eyebrows, and it tells us something about what his expression, what his mood is at any given time. And I also, this might just be me, but for me, having those big eyebrows kind of, it makes him look more intelligent somehow. And I'm not really sure to ex to ex how to explain why that is, but for some reason it just gives him more of a sense of of presence, of intention, of 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 having a mind going on underneath what he's doing. And that might just be my human monkey brain going, "Oh, eyebrows! I have eyebrows. He's like me, and I'm smart, so he's smart." That might be really all there is to it. And when it comes to character design, a lot of the time that's really, frankly, all you need. Now, speaking of character design, there's two parts to Hammond's character design. There is Hammond himself, and then there is his giant hamster ball mech. And the mech has a kind of a uh, couple of interesting things going on with it as well. Because as we see in game, Hammond's mech is kind of a high-tech piece of equipment. Like this, this thing is smooth and well machined, and it's put together from you know factory-made parts and you know, standardized and it has a coherent, unified aesthetic and it's clearly built from, you know, using standard sets of pieces. But that's not really what his mech used to be like. So there was a decision at some point in Overwatch to the, the present day Hammond that we see here is someone who has left Australia. He has left Junkertown after becoming the champion of the, of the Bloodsport. Um, and he has rebuilt his mech from like, from being this junk mech that he put together from whatever parts he was able to find in Australia into something that is decidedly more high-tech, like, more... It, it looks completely comparable to the tech level of something like Diva's mech, for example. And that, to me, is a slightly interesting thing, because one of the things that's supposed to be the thing about the character is that he's a hamster. He's a little... He's a scavenger, essentially. Like, he scavenges parts. He makes these little... What the heck was I looking for? Right, uh, the bit with Winston. Hammond, he kind of scavenges parts from around the lab on the Horizon Colony and builds himself his own little kind of knockoff escape pod to hitchhike with uh, Winston as he finally takes off. And we can kind of see here that the pod itself is 
kind of cobbled together from bits and pieces that he found on the Horizon Colony. And for me, at least, that kind of feels like that's supposed to be the concept of the guy. Like, because hamsters are, in nature, scavengers. Like, they run around, they gather all kinds of food, they stash it, they just, they eat whatever the heck they can get their hands on. Um... And that's, to me, that felt like that was supposed to be the concept of Hammond, is that he's someone who kind of scavenges the little bits and bobs and lost pieces of equipment that other people don't care about. They don't really need them. He grabs them, he he uh, hoards them, and then he puts them together into some kind of cool machine, and then that cool machine rolls into your face with a grappling hook and throws you over the ledge uh, somewhere on Hanamura when you weren't expecting it. That That's, uh, that's a thing that happens. And so, for me, the junk mech kind of felt more like an expression of that part of his character, like that kind of scrappy scavenger, troublemaker little guy who kind of steals whatever he needs from wherever he can get it and puts it together in whatever way that makes sense, um, because he mostly just wants a functioning hamster ball to go out and make trouble with. But then, the mech he has now looks a lot more like it came off the assembly line at some factory somewhere. Like, it looks like a thing that was designed and executed through modern machining manufacturing and that i don't think that's a point necessarily against hammond's character design as a whole but for me i feel like it would have been more interesting if the thing was clearly like cobbled together by a hyper intelligent hamster working with whatever he could get his hands on because he doesn't want to tell the world hey i'm an intelligent hamster who needs robot parts to build a death machine could you please help me sir i would like to purchase these guns from you to put onto my death hamster ball to me, it feels more in tune with the character that he kind of has to do things covertly in the shadows. And it's not like, yeah, sure, he could just buy it on the dark web or whatever. Maybe he went to Winston, who knows him and who he, who he has a friendship with, and Winston provided him with the parts. Either one is possible, but either one feels less like an expression of his character than the Junkertown mech. Than the cobbled together thing. Like, and I don't mind that the mech looks kind of more like it's made from modern parts than the whole the sort of post-apocalyptic Mad Max universe of of Junkertown. I don't mind that it looks more modern, but I would like it if it looked like it was cobbled together from modern. But like he's he's been going around with his mech to, you know, the scrap heaps behind high tech Omnic factories and stuff and stealing parts from there. And he's cobbled it together from high tech parts, but nonetheless still cobbled it together using his wit and his ingenuity. And that's also something that, that comes across in some of the written lore that I've seen. Like he's he's supposed to be this kind of um problem solving skill and adaptability like that's that's uh, like the others Hammond's intelligence grew he demonstrated impressive problem solving skills and adaptability and he became more curious about the world around him Hammond would frequently escape into different parts of the moon base um and like he he's he what they didn't know was that Hammond was busy teaching himself the skills of a mechanic which would soon become in handy like so that to me feels a lot more like Right, Hammond sensed his opportunity, prototyped a basic build plan using toys in his room, then finalized his build onto a blueprint with sticky notes. Right, that's the kind of thing that he is. And so, yeah, I don't know. It, it, the, the highly refined, clean, clearly professionally put together mech kind of, yes, it speaks to his capability as an engineer, but it also kind of speaks against this whole flying by the seat of his pants, innovative little problem solving kind of character that he's kind of supposed to be. But yeah, I mean, there's kind of not that much to say about Hammond. It's really not like a character like uh, Sombra or Widowmaker or Anna who have you know, deep lore connections and these emotional narratives going on with them through the, the through the whole of a watch. Hammond is a joke character. He's a joke. Like he, like I said at the start, he's a joke character. He's, he's for fun. He's a meme. And that's completely fine. I mean, I think that's something Overwatch can definitely contain and something that feels like a natural extension of just how hard Overwatch goes on using stereotypes um, for, for a lot of its characterization. Hello, Tracer's accent. Hello, Reinhardt's attitude. But, yeah, it's... I mean, I am a little stumped by him, really. Like most people were, like most people were expecting him to be like a chimpanzee escaping from uh, from the moon colony and being kind of like a nemesis uh, to Winston or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> and I'm kind of pleased that they 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 kind of pulled the rug out from under all of us. Like I think that's really cool. I think it's really cool that they just went, you know what, fuck it, which is. Screw the lore, screw the story, screw taking anything about this super seriously. This is a Saturday morning cartoon, and every Saturday morning cartoon needs a funny animal sidekick. Let's make a hamster in a hamster ball with big fucking guns on the side, because we're Blizzard, and they're still going to pay us money for it. 
and that like they they have it takes it takes a little bit of like again they're blizzard it's overwatch nobody's gonna quit the game over him but it takes a little bit of 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 testicles to kind of make a completely out of left field weird ass silly decision like that especially in a game that has a community that is so lore obsessed as overwatch has like I, I i saw a lot of disappointment from a lot of people that the next character in overwatch wasn't going to be some long lost connection to set up a love triangle between reaper and soldier 76 and some old third in command that nobody had heard about until now that there wasn't going to be someone new that they could ship with mercy it wasn't going to be something i none of that is a hamster and a hamster ball with guns on it because we're blizzard and we can do that shit but i like it like i really do like that they kind of went Let's just let's just screw around. Let's just have some fun. Let's not, let's just do something silly. And to that end, it's like there's only so much you can really criticize the character design because it fulfills its function exactly. Like with with other characters, like Reaper, for example, I have some like some questions about him walking around in like a black leather suit and with a mask on like that's like i could ask some questions about how well that expresses the history of the character like the betrayal like the fall from noble grace is that really on display in reaper's character design and does that really fulfill the role that reaper needs to play within the narrative of the story but then on the other but but you know you can also make arguments against it but with him and it's like he needs to be a funny joke character fulfilling a kind of weirdo super science saturday morning cartoon trope and you could hardly do a better job like he he's kind of perfect in his way that there really isn't i can nitpick stuff but there really isn't a better way to execute on that ridiculous concept than than exactly what they've done so i mean kudos to blizzard this this is a ridiculous funny joke that they made and i think it lands i think it works they trolled the community and they got away with it rather spectacularly <sighs> Anyway, I think that's about all I have to say about the hamster in the hamster ball with guns on it. Uh, apologies for all the car noise that's probably been on the mic outside. It's just, I've had, had to have my windows open because it is scorching hot. Even like at uh, midnight almost what it is right now. And I have all my windows open. It's, it's miserable. Anyway, if you would like to help me pay to maybe one day get an AC unit or something, you can head on over to Patreon where uh, you can subscribe to the channel with whatever like if you have a dollar that you don't need then that dollar can be very helpful to me because of food and rent and stuff food and rent is is good i I'm, I'm told that having food and being able to pay rent are important things for not dying so that would be good uh but if you don't want to do that of course that's completely fine thank you so much for watching the video you can like you can subscribe and if you are dissatisfied with this video you can click the dislike button, but I should warn you that clicking the dislike button has a pretty decent chance to initiate a self-destruct uh, sequence on the moon colony up on the moon. And like, if that starts to blow up, I'm just saying all the hyper-intelligent animals up there are going to get in escape pods and they're going to crash down to Earth. And then you're going to have to deal with them. And it's like, I don't know if there's hamsters up there, but if you get crushed by a demon hamster ball rolling down the street with giant guns on it tomorrow, I just don't come crying to me. Thank you very much for watching.